okay is it audible so the topic is three growth hacks to market your wordpress plugins however i would like to mention it it also applies to people who develop themes or sell services so just because the title suggests it is for plugins i mean it doesn't mean that uh, the rest of it who are not developing plugins the lessons do not apply to them the reason i mentioned plugins was because maybe i thought the chances of getting selected as a speaker would increase <laughs> because i see i mean more developers come to word camps so. <laughs> so talking about like giving a brief intro for me uh i started blogging when i was 16 and today i turned 22 and uh, i feel wordpress has been like the booster for my career if i never came across wordpress i would never know how to not leave home and still keep making money um i'm the host of rohan chobi tv so rohan chobi tv i mean it's my own youtube channel which i plan to convert into an ott which is over the top television channel for startups so for the pilot run i'm trying to grow a youtube channel and within a year we plan to start an ott channel for startups i co-founded international growth hacking day with 35 co-founders from nine countries and it was endorsed by uh, the ceo and director of um, niti aayog government of india and i also wrote a book the growth hacking book which became a best seller in seven countries so it is safe to call it an international best seller audience.com which is ibm and twitter's partner product ranks me as india's most followed growth hacker and the only thing that i help startups with is to get their first 100 1000 10000 or 100k users or customers uh because i listened to dibya the the speaker just right before this so i would like to mention that i guess uh, peppy post is um netcore's product i guess so i was once called to netcore's office to ask how they can um, increase the user base for peppy post so which makes me believe that i have like reached far better companies some of them are, are new unesco uber red bull kalyan jewelers freshworks and others so when i say growth hacking the common question that i get is what is growth hacking So from my book the definition that I subscribe to is growth hacking is conducting marketing exper experiments to uncover strategies to help you attract and retain users however i do not get too religious about my own definition i keep it open for other people to define what they want the growth hacking to be uh so i coined a term called growth set and we word marked it or trademarked whatever you call it so a lot of people also ask if you learn growth hacking and you become growth hacker so how do you become growth hacker the simplest answer to that is work on your growth set i define growth ha growth set with a mathematical formula which is growth set equals skill set mindset and tool set and growth hackers operate at the intersection of marketing technology and product so what i mean by marketing is the inbound and outbound marketing strategies that you use to maybe attract traffic to your website or gain users whatever your intent is with product i mean uh, the the hacks that you do or implement at the product level it can be copywriting referral marketing affiliates or the ui and ux i mean working on your ui and ux or gamifying your app or website or whatever product you have built the next is technology by technology i mean um, so growth hackers do not have to be coders it is good if you are a coder but if you are not from a technical background only if you can um, i mean if you can write pseudo codes 
and someone else in some developer can implement your pseudo code for you still you would be considered as a growth hacker so programming is not a necessity to become a growth hacker what i mean by skill set mindset and tool set is so before this talk divya gave a very good example of uh, not example analogy of um, roots and water if you put pour in more uh, uh, he gave also given example if you pour in more money and see results you keep on putting money in your marketing and you get used to the paid advertising however if you stop burning cash and find organic ways to grow you will uh, you know end up being creative so i feel that's what growth hacking is and that was a very excellent analogy that he suggested that is that is the right mindset a growth hacker should have so maybe officially divya wouldn't call himself a growth hacker but the mindset that he suggested is exactly what we need by tool sets i mean to suggest the tools and methods that you will use to scale your business and skill set is what skills you would use to um grow your business so for let's say for developers or wordpress plugin developers i feel there are major four channels that they get traction from is seo so this can either include listing their plugins on certain websites or writing content for it and then ranking for it the next would be social media or wordpress repository you listing your plugin in the wordpress repository and lastly affiliate now in this talk we are going to explore the same channels but with a different twist so i wouldn't go in depth with a lot of hacks let's keep it to 3 so that you are able to retain the information and you are able to take a nice take away i mean you get a nice take away from this talk so we are, i've limited it to 3 but hopefully it should provide you enough value so uh this gentleman in the front row had a very good i don't remember can you uh, may i please know your name nirav so this uh, uh nirav sir had a very good talk so i was searching wordcamp mumbai before coming here just to see you know how other speakers have uh, presented before this he had a very good talk i guess in 2016 17 about um um say selling products in which you mentioned just because you can build it doesn't mean you have to build it so so in case someone has not watched the talk i highly recommend to watch nirav's uh, wordpress talk wordcamp talk sorry so what uh, so maybe there are a lot of how many are developers here so how many are theme developers and how many are plugins so let's raise hands for plugins okay quite a few how many develop themes okay and how many do you have i mean how many have services to sell okay so this applies to everyone almost everyone in the crowd so talking about wordpress plugins just because you can build it doesn't mean that you have to build it you have to analyze and see if there is an actual need for what you want to build the next is cater to your community so last year i created a saas product for twitter uh and i saw there was a demand for a product like that so it used to make tweets go viral and um, that's how that's how i also got into touch with a lot of political clients like bjp and congress to you know make their tweets viral through my platform so i saw there was a need for a product that made tweets go viral and and i built it so maybe you know you don't have to have 10000 or 20000 people demanding a product like that maybe you will have only 1000 or 2000 people wanting to have the product you can still build it for them so my product acquired about 1200 customers in 3 months and that was enough for us to break even and make good amount of profits so the first step i i think we can summarize um online businesses into th just three steps the first is build a community the second is provide value and third is charge for the value that you provide but 
however some people tend to skip the first step and move on to the second one that is building products and services right away without having a community that will back you so so community building is something that you cannot skip at all maybe you know you are a developer and you may feel engaging with your community is not um, good investment for your time or but but i feel that building a community makes it a lot more easier for you to sell anything that you build the next is uh, see if the plugin already exists the kind of idea that you have someone might have already built it and maybe if there it already exists i mean if it does not exist you can always create it if it is already made you can implement a new change to it and you know release your own version of it but it shouldn't happen that the other plugin which already exists just makes one updates and your product does, is no longer relevant so you have to make sure how you can future proof your product as well which again you know it is taken from near of stock the only prerequisite like i said is to build so i've written plugins on the slide but i what what i mean to say is build products so valuable that your prospects have no choice but to buy from you so you build build when there is a real need for it and you wouldn't have to really sell it because i'm a growth hacker i love funnels so we will see three hacks at each stage of the three uh, funnel stages that i've mentioned in this diagram acquisition activation and retention we will see one hack from each stage so i do not have a lot more going on the slides but uh, you might want to carefully listen to what i'm saying so, and and maybe take notes if you think that is relevant so the first hack is at from the acquisition stage the acquisition stage means where you're attracting traffic to your website or wherever you have listed your plugin if not your plugin your theme and if not your theme your services so maybe you have listed your services on your website or maybe you have listed your theme on your website so how do you get traffic and a, a traffic and attention to your plugin uh i call this strategy lead magnet redistribution so a few days ago i was looking for a learning management system plugin lms plugin so learning management system is nothing like uh, you trying to create a udemy on your own website so maybe you know all of you are aware of udemy so if you want to create a udemy like structure on your own website you can use an lms plugin so before buying the plugin from so there are maybe you know major five vendors and before buying i made the decision based off uh, a blog post so, so maybe if this and then that blog post has another lead magnet to uh, capture my email so i based my decision by reading content so even though you are developer you may want to have a blog or something where which can educate your potential buyers if you cannot write maybe try hiring content writers so so making i mean producing content is the number one strategy to sell sell anything i'm sure most of you would agree and i i say lead magnet distribution specifically i suggest doing this on linkedin because that's the only social media right now which gives you maximum traction so the only two social media i can think of for you to reach maximum people right now is linkedin and tiktok so of course tiktok is not a platform you will sell wordpress plugins so linkedin is the uh, best channel for you to utilize right now so now you must be wondering how do i reach out or reach to my potential buyers on linkedin one hack is you either you know so, so most of the bloggers and company owners mostly you know small most small to medium businesses would have a website on wordpress so you can directly reach out to them by the search option on linkedin another good hack to uh, definitely find wordpress users on linkedin is to get linkedin sales navigator in the sales navigator you can uh, add a filter for seeing what technologies the companies are using and in there you can write wordpress so if you input wordpress in um, linkedin sales navigator's filter 
you will be able to get an extensive list of companies and people who have their websites on WordPress. So, so imagine if you can get the data, I mean, if get people on LinkedIn, you know that they are going to use, they are using WordPress because it shows it in the filters. So you can be, you can reach out to them confidently because you know they are having their websites on WordPress. So this is one hack. So before you try the hack number one, that is link lead magnet redistribution on LinkedIn, I suggest you connect to as many users as possible on LinkedIn who are using Word, who are WordPress users. So what do you do with a lead magnet? So the lead magnet is anything like a free resource that you want to give to people to educate about your plugin or service or theme or whatever the product is. And then you ask them for their email address or phone number to give it to them. So there was a company that I was working with, a New York based com SaaS company who wanted their first, hun uh, first 1000 beta users. And what I did for them is we created a lead magnet and I published it on my uh, LinkedIn profile. And I simply asked people to comment yes if they wanted to get it. Uh, and, and I just posted the update, I went to sleep, the next day I wake up, what I see is it already had 3,30,000 views and 1,000 plus comments. And all of them were saying yes. So these were like the potential beta users this company wanted. And I couldn't imagine how, it cannot become more easier than this. You posting an update and then next day 1,000 people asking you for what you were selling. So, so I guess the best way to reach out to your people right now, if you are considering to be social media has a channel is LinkedIn and do this, use this strategy, create a lead magnet, ask them to provide your email address or phone number and give it to them once they provide it. Now you may wonder that, okay, once the lead magnet is created, it is shared on your profile. Maybe your post did not go viral as mine. Maybe you, instead of getting thousand leads, you got only 100. How do you reach out to more people? So another potential strategy that you can use is instead of wasting your lead magnet by not sharing it further. So once you have already shared it on your profile, doesn't mean that you can't share it um, on other channels or on, on other people's profiles. So the other hack could be you partnering with other influencers and asking them to share the exact same lead magnet on their profile. So let's say me and Raghavendra have, um, I have 20,000 followers on LinkedIn, Raghavendra may have 10,000 and we have an overlapping network of 100 or 200 mutual friends. But the rest of it from the 1,000 and 2,000 connections that we have are still not exposed to this lead magnet. So once I've posted this lead magnet on my profile and I've got 100 leads, I can ask Raghavendra to do, post it on his profile and maybe from his profile, I'll get more 50 leads. Then I'll go to, from Raghavendra, I'll ask my other friend Saurabh to post it. Then I'll get more to 50, 100 leads from there. So you can keep asking in LinkedIn influencers to post the exact same lead magnet and keep collecting leads. So the, so your cost of developing, I mean, cost of writing or creating a lead magnet is just one time, but you can keep redistributing it again and again and again. So, so that is one, so that is why I call it should, uh, the hack is called lead magnet redistribution. Now you must be wondering why would your friends share your, I mean, why would your friends help you get the leads? So anyways, the plugins and themes and all of that have these affiliate model. So what can it, uh, so, so maybe your friends would question you, what is in it for me? So you can tell them that you can potentially, uh, the first thing is you get virality on your post. So if you're sharing a lead, valuable lead magnet, anyways, the post is going to get a lot of traction. So you are getting viral content for free from me. The second is whatever leads you get and they convert, you, you make, you know, X percentage of profit. So, so you can always work with your friends on affiliate model if they feel uh, they have real influence on the platform. The next hack is leverage psychological, psychology hacks to supercharge your plugin sales. So before I move on to the second one, I forgot to tell you um, why LinkedIn's algorithm favors organic reach. So in 2017, like I said, my posts were getting insanely high amount of views. That was because 
the algorithm was based on the matthew effect the matthew effect means the the rich people keep becoming more richer and the poor people keep becoming more poorer i don't know if that is the word so what happens is the people who were getting more engagement on linkedin are shown on the top of the field and the people who get less engagement are buried inside the i mean um, lower in the field so this created a disparity and uh, top 1% of the platform i mean uh, top 1% of linkedin users got all the engagement and views and the rest 99 were starving for engagement and views so linkedin came up with another recent algorithm that i mean they also had an update in 2018 then they recently had an update in june 2019 and the latest algorithm says this the posts are ranked based on two factors two variables the first is people you know that means the people you are connected to and the second is things you care about so let's say if i care about wordpress i would be i would i'm more likely to see wordpress related updates in my feed on the top so let's say if you are my connection and you and you post something related to the wordpress and i'm following a hashtag wordpress or a group wordpress so linkedin is more likely to show me an update from you because you're in my connection so the two variables are the people you know and the things you care about and that's why linkedin suggests to only post update which are very specific so let's say if you're a web uh, wordpress developer or you're providing services related to wordpress you want to make sure that you keep talking about just wordpress to create the community around the same topic the second what they suggest so this is coming from the engineers of linkedin the next tip they suggest is mentioning five people in all your updates and asking them uh, who are more likely to engage in the discussion so if if i'm posting a lead magnet or just a normal update how i created my plugin and how it can be useful for your business tag five people who are more likely to hop in the comment section and tell something and start a conversation and next tip they suggest is to use three hashtags not more than that so i'm not sure what's the logic behind this but this is coming from linkedin engineers so i will follow blindly hmm. and the last um, algorithm factor is they uh, favor uh, updates that encourage conversation so if you have a regular to and fro going on in your comment sections your updates are more likely to rank higher in the feed the next is um, psychology hacks to supercharge your plugin sales so i just had only one hack but there is a mistake that i wrote hacks so the one psychology hack that i always use with my services is or if you have plugins so let's say let's let's understand with an example so let's say if i want to sell my book i would uh, charge it maybe you know 450 for the book the next pricing option i would have with the book you can get be in my you know whatsapp community where i share a growth hack every day a new growth hack every day plus you get access to a master class to get your first 100 customers organically even when nobody knows you so these three you get for so let's say you get the book for $25 the option b is $35 where you get the book the access to the community and access to master class for 35 so there is a price difference of $10 and the third pricing option would be you get the book you get the community you get the master class plus one addition is you get a four page guide for growth hacking which is now $65 so you will so when you analyze the option b and option c there is only one difference in option b i'm selling the book community and master class for dollar 35 and in option c i'm selling book community plus master class plus four page guide for dollar 65 so you're more likely to pick dollar 35 option because it's cheaper than the third option and having more value and you are going to drop option number 1 which was just book for $30, $25 because when you compare that with b it is ridiculous i mean book for 25 and then option b was book community and master class for $35 so you i know that you are more li likely to pick the dollar 35 option so you can price your plugins like that so you make customers pick the op pricing options that you want them to pick 
So this is called decoy effect. You can always Google search and find more about it. Or you can go to my Quora uh, profile. I've shared more than, I guess, 100 uh, psychology hacks that you can employ for your business. So this is just one of those 100. The last is price your plugin like a SaaS company. So I've, I've seen a lot of plugin sellers or service vendors if you're selling marketing services or WordPress related services or if you're selling themes. A lot of people have these one time charges and then they forget uh, to, to remind their customers or they do not have something that customers would keep coming back. So I suggest even though you're a developer, you think like a marketer and price your plugin like a SaaS company. So what a SaaS company does is it keeps charging you on a monthly recurring model. And, and that, is way I, uh, that is what I think all the plugins should be charged sim in a similar fashion. So maybe I, I was talking to some one of the sponsors outside and they said their plugin is about um, $149 per year. I, I think that's a very smart way of charging. I mean, they are exactly following this principle of charging like a SaaS company. What I would improve in that is I'll make it monthly. Why I say that is because then you get to see your monthly recurring revenue. I mean, not that you have to care about it, but what happens is let's say, uh, so there are two ways when you charge people on month, uh, recurring model is um, if you do not charge people on recurring model, you kind of uh, lose customers. So let's say if I forget to renew my subscription, which has to be done manually, if I buy a plugin and I had to renew my subscription with you manually, I may forget, I may get busy and may not come back. However, if you auto charge me, it can happen that I did not want it my card to be auto charged and I will make a re refund request or I'll make a charge back if I was using my credit card. So to to make sure that this doesn't happen, you can remind your users beforehand before you charge them automatic that the, the charges are automatic and in the next 30 days we are going to charge you again. So they have an option to continue, I mean, keep it as it is or cancel. So yeah, so maybe some people may debate that plugins are not SaaS products and the pricing may not work. But I think there's a lot of plugins these days come with this monthly or yearly recurring charges. And also plugin, plugins are nothing but a software product and you're also providing support. So that becomes a service. So essentially I would say plugins are nothing. I mean, it is safe to say plugins are also software has a service, SaaS products. Okay, so I think we ended the presentation. Lastly, what I want to say to you is um, follow me on Twitter, that is Rohan Chobe 4 for more growth hacks. And uh, I have a gift for you. So today, since it's my birthday, I have, like I was talking about creating your own community, which is super dedicated towards you. So I have a very small community. I'm not famous enough to have thousands of people. I mean, ten, tens and thousands, but I have about, you know, good 500,000 people who are dedicatedly following me everywhere and they will just buy anything if I'm selling. So from Goregao to Mira Road, there are about nine billboards with my um, birthday wishes. If at all someone says between Goregao to Mira Road and they see my billboard, it is only one kilometer from the station, click a picture and send it to me on Twitter and in return I'll send you a gift to your postal address. Thank you so much.